Under physiologic stress, cells undergo adaptation to achieve a new steady state or homeostasis to be compatible in their new environment, unless the injury is too severe, in which case, of course, irreversible injury occurs and the affected cells die. Causes of cell injury can include hypoxia, chemical agents such as drugs and alcohol, physical agents such as trauma, um, thermal or ultraviolet infections, immunological reactions such as anaphylaxis or autoimmune disorders, genetic defects such as inborn errors of metabolism, nutritional defects such as vitamin deficiencies or obesity leading to diabetes, aging such as degeneration due to repeated trauma, um, something like degenerative disc disease, and due to aging we can also have intrinsic cellular senescence. Cell response to injury is not an all-or-nothing phenomenon. The stronger and longer the stimulus, the larger the damage. Response to a given stimulus also depends on the type, status, and genetic makeup of the injured cells. For instance, if a skeletal muscle experiences ischemia, it can tolerate two hours before there is irreversible injury. But cardiac muscle can only tolerate 20 minutes before it experiences irreversible injury due to the specific type, status, and genetic makeup of the cell. So we're going to focus on four biochemical themes of cellular injury, ATP depletion, free radicals, loss of calcium homeostasis, and defects in membrane permeability. So first let's talk about loss of energy due to ATP depletion. So this is particularly important in tissues with low glycolytic activity where ATP production is dependent on oxidative phosphorylation of ADP and the electron transport chain of the mitochondria. So here we have ischemia occurring causing changes in the respirations of the mitochondria affecting its ATP production. depleting the ATP stores, resulting in glycolysis, which is a very inefficient form of energy. Glycolysis causes us to use glycogen and affects our pH level, causing clamping, I'm sorry, clumping of nuclear chromatin. In addition, when we have ATP depletion, we have changes in our sodium pump, which causes an influx of calcium water and sodium into the cells and an efflux of potassium out of the cells causing swelling, loss of microvilli, blebs, and endoplasmic reticular swelling as well. Some of the other effects of ATP depletion include detachment of ribosomes causing decreased protein synthesis and lipid depositions. Okay, so let's talk about generation of reactive oxygen species. Um, these are also called free radicals, which are extremely unstable, highly reactive chemical species with a single unpaired electron in an outer orbital. In cells, they attack and degrade nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Some examples of free radicals include hydroxyl, hydrogen, or superoxide. Free radicals constitute an important mechanism of cell injury. It contributes to chemical radiation injury, oxygen and other gaseous toxicity, cellular aging, microbial killing by phagocytic cells, inflammatory damage, and tumor destruction by macrophages. So free radicals can be generated by redox reactions, neutrophils, drugs or toxins, irradiations, or even reperfusion injuries. And depletion of free radical scavengers and other antioxidant def defenses actually also contributes to the generation of reactive oxygen metabolites. The effects on the cells are very specific. Peroxidation of lipids causes membrane damage. Damage of thiol-containing proteins can also cause membrane damage. 
Mitochondrial damage can result in apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, and decreased respirations. And DNA damage can also cause apoptosis and also carcinogenesis over a long-term period of time. Calcium homeostasis is important to maintain cell life. Cytosolic free calcium is kept at concentrations that are at least tenfold lower than the extracellular levels. In the normal cell, most intracellular calcium is sequestered in mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. Calcium concentration gradients are maintained by membrane-associated calcium-magnesium-dependent ATPases. Ischemia and some toxins cause early release of calcium into the cytosol. So in this example, you can see sources of increased cytosolic calcium, the mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, and calcium that's external to the cell. The consequences of this is increased cytosolic calcium, of course, ATPase, phospholipase, protease, and endonuclease. ATPase causes decreased ATP. Phospholipase causes decreased phospholipids. Protease causes disruption of membrane and cytoskeletal proteins. And endonuclease causes nuclear chromatin damage. Okay, so what happens is that an injurious agent causes some damage to the cell, which releases calcium, causing decreased ATP, decreased phospholipids, disruption of membrane and cytoskeletal proteins, and nuclear chromatin damage. In addition, we can have defects in plasma membrane permeability. Some of the causes of plasma membrane permeability changes include direct damage by toxins such as bacteria, viruses, physical or chemical injuries, damage to secondary ATPase loss from calcium-mediated phospholipase activation, and some of the effects um, include breakdown of the concentration gradient of the metabolites, including um, problems with mitochondrial integrity. Mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation can be disruptive, disrupted, causing um, a decrease in ATP production, which can result in decreased sodium-potassium pump actions, resulting in swelling, altered metabolism, causing depletion of glycogen stores, and lactic acid accumulation due to decreased pH and increased intracellular osmotic pressure and intracellular swelling. Lactic acid accumulation also occurs from the ineffective um, metabolites due to glycolysis, using glycolysis for your energy source. It's a very ineffective way um, to use energy. Okay, so those are the four main ways that cell injury can occur.